Okay. That could give uh, a boost to the Commission directly from a 500 kilometers orbit. The maneuver will take less than 30 minutes and we will land in a precise area over the Pacific. The mission will be launched in March next year. We are awaiting for, for the launch right now. Here is one of uh, the tests we've made with uh, our motors because it's always nice to see motors firing. I need to put the video here. It's just a, a very small burn, successful burn. So this small burn will give these 4 kilograms CubeSat around 200 meters per second delta V. But this motor was designed in order to be a technology demonstrator for our larger motors, so it's not suited for small CubeSats because it's large and heavy. So we start working on a different solution that can be addressed for CubeSats. CubeSats, as you know, usually are launched as secondary payloads, so they, are, they don't have very op many options defining the orbit that they need, so most of the time the orbit is not well suited for their, their mission. So, meaning that higher orbits allow longer missions, and lower orbits imply shorter, shorter missions. However, on high orbits, we have all the hassles with the decommission of the satellite in order to comply with the IAC rules. On, on the other side, on lower orbits, we deal with very short mission lifetimes, so we need to replan to maintain the constellation more quickly. So we developed a product that we call Phoenix to address this solution, this problem. Phoenix can be assembled in CubeSats into different configurations. The first one is around a central payload for CubeSats usually flying optical payloads such as cameras that have, a that have available space here on the sides or has the traditional uh, format in a stack payload that can be assembled in the middle of the CubeSat. So Phoenix can give several advantages to CubeSat missions. One of them is that it can be used to deploy a, a multiple CubeSat constellation in less than 20 days. It can perform an orbit raise, a moment transfer, to raise the, to increase mission lifetime on up to 67%, depending on the, the mission. And can also be used, of course, to deorbit uh, 3U CubeSat for orbits up to 700 kilometers. Here is a simulation that we have done using the DRAMA tool from ESA where we can see that a maneuver for, for Phoenix can increase the mission, life uh, mission time up to 800 days, for, in this case for a 500 kilometers orbit. Phoenix is quite small, actually. I have a plastic 3D printed model with me. It is a, a small circular motor with oh sorry with less than 10, uh, 10 centimeters in order to fit in the cube set and uh, 19 millimeters diameter it is a very simple design with uh, a traditional solid propellant cartridge uh, centrally perforated and here is where we have most headaches with the electronic explosive system in order to ensure all the safety precautions are being addressed. In this simulation we can see the burn profile of Phoenix. We have a very short burn, uh, less than one second, but uh, 
with some interesting values for, for trust. And here we can see a small specification about the total ISP, that is 260. The impulse should be 54 newtons per second with an average trust, trust of 77 newtons. Each cartridge, each motor should weight 20 grams and the whole set should weight less than 500 grams, 480. Uh, they are totally independent, so they can be assembled individually or in a set of four. So depending on the mission type, type we can select how many cartridges we want to put on board. Right now we are on the development of this unit. We hope during next year to conclude the necessary qualification tests and to perform by the second half of 2018 uh, in order to validation of the, the model. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's quick. So we will have a lot of time for questions. Um, your burn time is quite short, 27 seconds. Is it 77 Newton per Phoenix or is it for the four of them 77 Newton? Per unit. Per unit. Yes. So, so you're talking about 340 units, yes. uh, 340 Newtons for the four? Yes, exactly. Um, how are you going to maintain the attitude of your satellite or your uh, thrust vector direction? Well, we need a satellite capable of perform attitude control. We can add a spin wheel if there is a need, but what we recommend is to fire two by two at the same time, so the total net moment can compensate for each motor. So the total yeah, but they will not be tightly balanced. Uh, your four motors will not exert exactly the same force. Yes, but also the, the momentum uh, introduced by each motor will be small and can, from our simulations can be compensated by the onboard magnetometer, by magnetotorkers in a short amount of time. No, magnetotorkers gives you micronewton, newton meters of torque. Yes. If, your, if your thrust vector or the average value of the thrust vector is misaligned to the center of mass, you can have a huge uh, torque disturbance on your satellite that will rotate it even in 0.7 seconds by... Uh, yes, but... It can, it can spin up to very high rates. The motors need to be assembled near the center of mass in order yeah, to... Exactly at the center of mass, yes, otherwise exactly. it will be a huge... We cannot assemble motors in the in the upper corners or. Not. Yeah, and then the, the four motors must have exactly the same thrust uh, force as well. Otherwise, oh, yes, yeah. they, they are designed in order to have the same thrust each motor. Okay. Uh, each is each unit 120 grams. Uh, each unit is a little below 100 grams. All together, the, the four of them plus the electronics to, should be 480 grams. Okay. And the power need? Do you need any external power? Yeah, we need an external power to operate our shape memory alloy that will be the actuator responsible to operate the valve for the ignition, but it will be a very short period of time, requiring about one and a for some seconds. Okay, and again, you will need, I think, three axis control. Yes, we will need three axis control. Can you ask a question? Do you have any restrictions on storage? the storage environment or something? For the propellant? Ah, yes. We have performed the radiation aging tests on the propellant 
up to the, the test was set for 20 years radiation and we fired the, the propellant afterwards and it, it fired within the parameters. Uh, also on the ground, the humidity is in the those things. Yes, but the, the chamber, uh, after the assemble, the chamber where the propellant is stored is sealed so there is no transfer between the, the environment. And uh, did you already do EMC's uh, testing of uh, electronics? The About, sorry? Uh, EMC testing of uh, electronics. Yes, yes. Uh, well, not on, on Phoenix. Phoenix uh, takes the heritage from the motor uh, I showed you before that we developed for DSAT. And on DSAT, we perform the full range of tests required. So the, the electronics here will be readapted. But we will take the knowledge that we get from on that mission. Any other question? We still have time. Almost 10 minutes. Uh, the cost should be around 15,000. So, very good for the four minutes. Do you know of a reasonable way where you could change the, the fuel formulation to reduce the thrust and maybe increase the burn time to perhaps help some of your, your stability uh, concerns? Well, we designed the burn time specifically to be a very short burn time in order to introduce less momentum on the satellite. We can indeed change the propellant formulation to have a longer burn, burn time. In a thrust profiles, in the, the times in the thrust, the how much variations do you have for each individual? Of the, uh, this unit? is the, the graphic for one individual. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so how much tolerance do you have for, for the, if the thrust profiles are different, you start the, the rotating? Uh, the, the alignment on the, the satellite? Yes. Uh, we are considering a 15 degrees alignment. Uh, no, I mean the, the, each individual unit must be fired simultaneously and must have the, the same thrust pro profiles. Yes. Uh, otherwise, the satellite start rotating. And so, how much tolerance do you have the, for the difference of the profile? 10% or 5% or 1%? Uh, I don't know the number by, by mind, but I think it's around 10%. Okay. Yes, so, do we have any other questions? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just made a calculation here, if you fire all four, you have about 308 newtons of thrust in 0.7 seconds. If your thrust vector doesn't go through your C of G and miss it by 5 millimeters, say worst case, 5 millimeters, the satellite will spin up to 4,200 degrees per second. Yes. So it's, it's huge. You yes. must do something about case, this misalignment. We recommend to use a spinning wheel. Yeah, even, even a spinning wheel will precess a lot for this disturbance talk. But uh, it's something that one needs to look at. You, you can either spin your satellite yeah. around the thrust vector and that may help. But With our other mission, the DSAT, we have a spinning wheel that will start spinning before in order to ensure that the, the, the fire don't provoke any undesired trajectory. Any question? Is there any other question? Okay, so any question. So let's thank our speaker again.